Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The QGate and Possible Application. This is a joint work with Evgeny Smidochki. Now, there are some relevant video to this presentation. These are the titles and links. I'm going to put this list at the description part of the YouTube video that you are now watching. Now, this presentation explores theoretically and by simulation the possibility of using nonlinear capacitor for the design of a galvanically isolated voltage sensor. Now, based on the duality between capacitor and inductors, the idea of using a nonlinear capacitor as a voltage sensor follows the concept of the flux gate, in which the nonlinearity of an inductor is used to realize a current sensor. Okay, so this is a sort of a dual to the flux gate current sensor. So here it is. This is well known. This is the flux gate current sensor, one very simple embodiment. We have here a ferrite or a ferromagnetic, I should say, ring or toroid. There is a line here, this is the current that we want to measure. There are some windings on it. These are excited by the oscillator. There is some power amplifier because you need a little bit higher current. And this current now is measured and it includes a second harmonic component which is linearly proportional to the current measured or supposed to be measured. So by demodulating and extracting the second harmonics, filtering out, you get an output which is linear in a certain range of course with the measured current. Now this dual approach which I'm presenting here. I think it's new, and if anybody knows on previous description of such a circuit, I'll be more than interested to know about that. So this dual has a nonlinear capacitor that is like X7R, the class two type capacitors. Here we want to measure this voltage, which is imposing a DC of this capacitor there is an excitation of a current here and similarly we are measuring the current which turns out to have a second harmonic component which is dependent on this voltage as I'll show and by demodulating this, car this signal here we can get an output which is a function actually it's a linear function could be of the measured voltage now this could be a DC voltage or DC plus AC, but the frequency of course has to be much below the oscillator frequency because of the Nyquist criteria. So let me talk a little bit about duality between inductors and capacitors. Here I'm showing actually the inductance case. We have a BH curve. We're talking about a nonlinear behavior like a ferrite or an amorphous core for example. And the local or differential inductance is the derivative of this curve at any given point. And of course, uh, this inductance is changing. We know that very well. H is a function of the current. And here I'm showing it, as you usually will see it. This is the local or small signal inductance. And this is the DC bias of the inductor. And the dual case will look like that. We have QV plot here. Here we have nonlinear case in which the Q goes sort of into saturation. The local derivative is the small signal capacitance. And this is again something that you see in the data sheet as the small signal capacitance as a function of the voltage, the bias voltage. So this is very well known. So the idea is to use the flux gate current sensor concept, which is based on this for this case. First of all, let me talk about simulation and how do we simulate a nonlinear capacitor in this case. Well, there is a very nice way to do it in LT Spice. You can define a nonlinear capacitor by actually defining the charge by a nonlinear equation. In this case, the tangent hyperbolic function is very nice. 
and this is a function of x, and x is the voltage across the capacitor. Tungsten hyperbolic is a very nice function, very similar to the QV curve, so you can use it. Another way is to use a table. Now here is what is given in a data sheet. This is for one particular capacitor that I'm going to explore later on and use in the examples. It's a X7S capacitor. It's a 16 volt maximum voltage specified, a 16 volt max capacitor. You see it starts with a 1.5 microfarad and then it goes down to a 400 nanofarad, quite a bit. There are some capacitors that will go even lower within the permissible voltage range. And here I'm showing the fitting. The green is the tangent hyperbolic, pretty good. The actual curve here, and this is by using or digitizing these points and just reconstructing it, looks like that. And we are going to use both this and this uh, for the simulation. So once we have here, we can now go back to the basics of the QV curve, similar to the BH in the inductance. So we see that for this particular capacitor, uh, the saturation is at about uh, within the accuracy of this fitting, uh, be say something below 20 microcoulomb, this will be microcoulomb, uh, and this is the zero, and it's symmetrical to the two sides. So the basic simulation schematics uh, can look like that. We have here the nonlinear capacitor defined by this tangent hyperbolic function of the fitting. Then we have two decoupling capacitors so that this capacitor is galvanically isolated from the measuring circuit. Then we have the excitation. I'm using sinusoidal. Actually, you can use also a square wave. And then we have the current coming in and it is sensed by this resistor. And you can demodulate this signal and I'll show it later. Now here, I've also put some auxiliary circuits. One is reconstructing the Q, the charge, and this is by using the same equation. Now this is the voltage here is the charge as a function of the voltage across the capacitor. And also I'm reconstructing the small signal capacitance or the derivative capacitance through the table. This is the table, which is actually digitizing the data sheet information, the curve that I've shown earlier. So here are some of the results, the simulation result. This is now the QV curve. I'm assuming now there is no DC fed in. We are starting at zero. There's no voltage across the capacitor, no charge. We are at this point. This red is the voltage across the capacitor. The green is the current through it. And here, this red now is the charge of the capacitor. And this line here, or this curve here, is the local capacitance, okay? So we are starting here, at this point, there is a no charge here in the capacitor, and we have a maximum capacitance because the derivative here is maximum. So this will be this point here. Now we move to this point by this excitation. So we are moving to a higher voltage. We are moving to a higher charge, here it is. And due to the fact that the derivative here is lower, then the local capacitance is smaller. Very neat, exactly what I've shown earlier. Now, I'm going to show the case of a capacitor which is exposed already to a DC voltage, okay? This is the voltage that we want to measure. So we start at a higher point here with some DC on it. Well, I'm assuming 5 volt. I think this is for a lower voltage, but the concept is correct. So we are starting with some bias voltage. So therefore we have some charge and we are already at a lower capacitance because the derivative here is lower than around zero, lower capacitance. And then we go to this extreme due to the excitation current. Okay, and 
Here we have maximum voltage, we have maximum charge, and minimum capacitance because this the derivative here is very small. Well, this straight line may be due to the fact that the table is finite and then it sort of terminates at one point. It could be that originally it should go even lower, but uh, the table is sort of limited in length. So now we go back from this point back to here by the current, the excitation. This is the swing of the excitation. And then, of course, the voltage will be minimum the charge will be minimum, and we have a lower capacitance. It's lower, but not as low as here, which we've seen before, but it is lower. So this is the concept here, and the idea is that since we have moved here to sort of an asymmetrical point, going back and forth, we are limited by Q, so this is asymmetrical now, then the current will be asymmetrical, and this will bring up a second harmonic component. Second harmonic component is due to a asymmetrical waveform. So here it is. We have the capacitor. This is now a simulation of the case. We have here the capacitor defined by this equation. We have the two uh, galvanically isolating capacitor, the sense signal and the excitation. Now here I'm generating a frequency which is twice the excitation frequency, okay, it's twice the frequency, and then I multiply this waveform by this voltage here, and I've, as I've shown in earlier video, this will bring up or uh, extract the second harmonics, which is then filtered, and then I have, I have here a DC, which represents this uh, second harmonic. So let's first of all have a look at the spectrum. We have here a case without DC, or this is zero, symmetrical waveform. This is the current. You see there is some second harmonic component. I think it's mainly because of the finite resolution of the simulation. In any case, it's 70 dB between the first harmonic. This is about 30, and here it's uh, minus 100, so it's 70 dB, so it's very low. But then, if we have some DC, here is the DC, 5 volt, it's fairly large, but then we get a very large component here, which is about only 10 dB below the first harmonic. So this is a hefty component here, as compared, of course, to this very low component. So there is a sensitivity, as you can see, to the distortion here, which generates the second harmonic, and we can see it in the spectrum. Now in the circuit we can extract it by again multiplying this voltage by a waveform of the second harmonic and then we get here a straight, well it's not a straight line but there's a very nice relationship between the DC that we want to measure and the output after filtering. Now possible uses here would be for measuring a voltage in a galvanically isolated, this will be capacitively isolated case. For example, if you want to measure the battery voltage in a EV inverter in which this is the digital part, so there's some differences here, and then you can do it here. Well, that may not be as it is that practical at this point, but this is an idea, and maybe there are some other cases that this could be useful. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest. And if anybody knows of any publication that shows something of this nature, please let me know because I don't know of any. And uh, of course, I'd like to know if uh, there is some publication which is actually covering this idea. Thank you very much.